There's no doubt Arctic Cat and Yamaha made some big waves in the snowmobile industry when three years ago they announced a cooperative engine supply and manufacturing agreement. Snowtracks went on a mission to drill down on this landmark move and get the inside story from the guys who actually made it happen. Yamaha's Peter Smallman II and Arctic Cat's Brad Darling. Clearly, Arctic Cat has North American-based manufacturing expertise, and Yamaha has enormous engine building skills centered around their Hamamatsu Japan engine facility. Both companies have inherent strengths and some inherent vulnerability. For sure, this groundbreaking marriage between a domestic and an import OEM had enormous potential to benefit both players. However, as most of us know, marriage can be a tricky dance. So let's have the DTR talk. Define the relationship. The relationship between Articat and Yamaha are really two relationships. One is an engine supply agreement uh, from Yamaha to Articat, and then a, a snowmobile manufacturing agreement between Articat and Yamaha. It started uh, back with the supply agreement with the SRX 120, and as the relationship grew, it grew to the Viper, and uh, since then it's been uh, mutually beneficial for both of us. Obviously, this partnership came with significant risk. Managing the risk is a story all on its own. At first, there was not a lot of concern uh, for the consumer perception because we did start off with the SRX 120. As we moved to the Viper, though, um, I think the benefit for the customer is, is we knew that the customer's loyalty to the brands and the perception of their customers of both Articat and Yamaha of our positive attributes that it would be beneficial for the customer in the long run. But going back to the SRX 120, it was nice to get kind of everything out of the place. How we could distribute parts to Yamaha so Yamaha can send it to their customers. How we could get parts from Yamaha for our engines so that we can send them to our customers. So we're able to figure everything out on a lot lower volume level with the SRX 120 that led us into the SR Viper. So are these two companies winning on this deal? I think what we found with this relationship and what we presented to the market, the return for the risk paid off. As everybody knows, Yamaha builds one of the best, if not the best, four-stroke engine. And we had the opportunity to couple that to our chassis and able to share that between the two of us. Then our customers are going to win. Our dealers are going to win. I think it's really a successful venture in the end. Just like marriages have surprises, so do snowmobile manufacturing partnerships. Some of the challenges we had with speed to market and reacting to market, obviously being so far away in Japan, but something that we've learned working together with Articat, together what we're doing is we're bringing to the market a product quickly that meets all the quality uh, standards that the customers are expecting from us. And we brought two strengths, totally different strengths together, and it's amazing how much now we're accelerating to market and then bringing out better product every year. Our, our quality has been improved since our partnership with Yamaha. I think the key thing is the mutual respect that the two companies and ourselves have for each other. Because the bottom line is you have two companies and it goes down to people. And we're, a lot of times it's just snowmobilers talking to snowmobilers. Yeah, and, and, and interesting to that is I always thought it was going to be more difficult for our engineers. Mm -hmm. You know, engineers are inventors, designers, and that's their baby. So we really brought a strong one team of engineering together as we work on sleds going forward. Sharing information was another unexpected outcome. When Pete and I originally started putting this together, um, I expected a different outcome than where we are today. You know, we, we knew there's gonna be some challenges, but what the outcome we have is better. So it's not a good thing. It's yeah. not a, unexpected as, as I'm saying, is, oh, sorry, we went the wrong way, but we absolutely have got closer together than we were when we started this relationship three plus years ago. Well, the best part of the sharing is we'll talk about a problem in the industry that I can't talk to another competitor about. I can talk to Brad about that. Some of the challenges about creating demand, creating how do we keep customers in the industry. These are conversations that we've had amongst our own people, but you can we can ask Brad, we can ask some of the, uh, the engineering team. At first, there was lots of secrets. Like, you know, we, they're competitors and how do we form this relationship? How much do we let we, out? We, and... we, were for, we were living within the contract, but as it uh, flourished, it became stronger and stronger. What, what's really unique about this and, and what I love about this relationship, Pete, is that we're able together to 
bring certain products to the market that now our competitors can't do. Uh, the industry isn't getting any bigger, as we all know, and there's product that we want to, and it costs millions of dollars to bring new product, but if we can paint it blue and green, we've got the togetherness to bring something that we don't think our competitors can do. Cooperation and competition seem like unlikely bedfellows. Here's how it's done. It kind of came natural. At first, we were worried about that because we were competitors, but it kind of came natural of where we kind of divide the line. As, as prior to the Yamaha relationship, and we're ending our relationship with Suzuki Power, um, it's a, a dramatic difference between Suzuki and Yamaha. Suzuki was a great engine supplier for us, but they weren't snowmobilers. The one thing that uh, basically glues this together, it's the four-stroke snowmobile. On the four-stroke side, you know, we're fully cooperative, we're working together. We're developing different uh, chassis, uh, new technologies. We're working together as a team to make a better four-stroke snowmobile. On the two-stroke side, we're still competitors. It's a, it's a different market in itself. To make it happen, Arctic Cat and Yamaha dealers had to buy in or the plan wouldn't work. We, we've talked about uh, having our, our dealers, a Yamaha dealer and Articat dealer, is the same dealer. I said that before, that we have them as, as joint dealers. And it's interesting enough, again, to go back to brand loyalty. And when we first launched this SR Viper in 7000 in 2014 model year, I remember coming back to our board to present the, the data after March 31st, so after a full season. And both Yamaha and Articat both grew our sales that year. Both of us mutually grew, but the one thing that made the difference is we grew the industry that year. Together, uh, together we grew the industry. We grew the industry. Yeah. That's so a good point. Uh, that, I think that's, that's important. What about kiss and tell? Yamaha can see Arctic Cat's inner sanctum and vice versa. How's that working out? Is this a tricky thing? Um, well, at first we didn't open up all the doors to all the engineering, everybody come on in. But as we started working together much closer, like Brad has been to Japan several times in Yamaha along with his team and his team of engineers. But in a relationship like this, if we're gonna make the best snowmobile, sometimes you have to open up the door a little bit to the technologies of how you make the product better. The secrecy required to launch this kind of cooperative effort was exceptional. In fact, Brad and Pete were worried that Super Tracks and Snow Tracks might have figured it out. I don't know how we kept it so quiet really don't. When you have this many people from both companies working on this project, I think what, what did help us, you know, by launching the SR120, we were able to get that out there. So, you know, we, we painted our 120 blue, that able to get us out so that Pete and I could be seen at dealer shows together and there wouldn't be a bunch of rumors. And you could talk about engines. And there's a lot of excitement and we knew that this was going to have a profound effect on the industry. But just bringing you on the inside, Mark, we had conversations. What are in market uh, snow tracks are going <laughs> to guess on what we were up to? And it was right up the end. Didn't get it. <laughs> the question everybody is asking is, when are we going to see another cooperatively developed snowmobile? Basically, what you're going to see in the future um, from our, uh, our relationship, we've been working on for well over five years. And now we have new processes. Uh, we have relationships that uh, we're benefiting from, and you're going to see it in the product that uh, we're producing in the future. And uh, like I said, you're going to be surprised. You haven't seen anything yet. And I think onto that, Pete, you triggered something. It's going to be part of what we learned together. Um, we talked about Articat speed to market and Yamaha fit, finish, and quality. I think what you're going to see is we've been able to kind of pull that together and accelerate so speed to market to keep that going as well as fit, finish, and quality, and uh, we're excited. This deal is a big deal in the snowmo biz. So what did it take to make it happen? You know, behind the scenes, you're taking two complete different companies with different cultures, different backgrounds, different languages, and we're forming a relationship to produce a single model going forward. Uh, that was a lot of work. You imagine, you know, taking part systems. Yamaha's part systems is nothing like Articat's. We had to form that link. So rather than us adapting to Articat and Articat were adapting to our system, we actually built a system that we both can connect into. And that's parts, service, engineering, communication. So in the process, there is a lot of people behind the scenes that were involved that moved a big mountain of work. You had hundreds of people on our team, hundreds of people on their team, and we're all pulling this all together. 
And, and we have to thank the group for that. I think that none of this would have been possible. It's not Peter I. This is actually our both of our companies pulling together to make a better snowmobile. And in the end, our consumers get one of the best snowmobiles that's ever going to be made. Well said. Can this groundbreaking, revolutionary relationship last long term? We talked a little bit about the short term relationship. I think what you saw in the short term relationship is what you're going to see in the long term relationship. You're going to see two companies continue to work together and to different than maybe we originally started, engine chassis. I think again, you're going back to, you're gonna bring two companies that are gonna to come together even closer together and bring out uh, the best snowmills that this industry's ever seen. I think you see the products that we've produced in the last three years. You know, each year, we are expanding the line. We're addressing the needs and the niches in the market. We'll continue to do that, but in the long term, you haven't seen anything yet. If you enjoyed the video that you just watched, like it and then subscribe to our page for more great content from Snowtracks TV.